tigers and guests. Welcome to our Suncoast Tiger Bay virtual event. My name is Amy Cianci. I'm the executive director of Suncoast Tiger Bay Club and your host for this virtual panel discussion. Local elections impact our community and our everyday lives. The Suncoast Tiger Bay Club serves as a civic commons where thought leaders and citizens of all political stripes come together to discuss the pressing issues of our time. With election day less than a month away, on November 3rd, we're committed to keep the conversation going so our members and guests can make informed decisions at the ballot box. Even though we cannot be together at our regular monthly luncheons, Suncoast Tiger Bay will keep bringing you virtual events like this one. Please help support our continuing commitment to delivering timely and informative programming by becoming a member, renewing your membership, or donating today. A donation of $25 or $35, what you would have spent on a Tiger Bay luncheon, will help sustain our club during these tough times and allow us to continue to keep you informed and connected to our community. Also consider promoting your business by sponsoring a Tiger Bay virtual event. For more information, contact us. Information will be provided at the end of the presentation. With that said, I would like to thank you for joining us for the Pinellas County Commissioner District 1 and District 3 at-large candidate forum. Please note that both districts are at-large, which means that these races are open to all Pinellas voters. Suncoast Tiger Bay Club is committed to the development of our future leaders. We call them Young Tigers. Each meeting, we welcome local high school and college students into our discussion. On this virtual event, we welcome our young Tigers joining us virtually from T Turpin Springs High School. Senior Taylor Watkins and junior Gabrielle Spenkus are joined with their chaperone, Vincent Natoli, assistant principal. We're so glad to have you with us today. You can help support our Young Tiger program by sponsoring a virtual event. We have so much important content to cover. Let's get started. It is with great pleasure that I introduce our moderator, Margie Manning. Margie started her career as a radio news reporter in St. Louis, spent 14 years at the Tampa Bay Business Journal, and currently writes for the St. Pete Catalyst. Welcome, Margie. Thank you, Amy. Candidates, we know that campaigning during a pandemic is a special challenge. Suncoast Tiger Bay is honored to have you with us today. Now, there are two candidates for the District 1 seat, incumbent Commissioner Janet Long and challenger Larry Ahern. Candidate Larry Ahern has submitted a statement, which I will now read. <clears throat> I am Larry Ahern, and I want to serve you on the Pinellas County Commission. I am married to Maureen Byrne Ahern. I have three grown daughters, Lauren, Lindsay, and Sarah, and one precious granddaughter, five-year-old Stella. I have lived in this community for nearly 40 years. Before moving here in the late 1970s, I grew up in a large family near Detroit, Michigan. After high school, I served four years in the United States Air Force. I then moved to Pinellas and started a small business, which I successfully ran for more than 20 years. After selling my business, I began serving on church, civic, and public boards. I also volunteered as a big brother. I then felt the call for public service and was elected to the Florida House of Representatives in 2010 and served four two-year terms. Realizing I wanted to continue serving the public and responding to numerous people asking me to represent them on the Pinellas County Commission, I decided there is too much at stake to not answer the call. With the support of Maureen and my faith, family, and friends, I am running for a seat on the Pinellas County Commission to be a voice for the people. Pinellas County needs leaders who will listen to and work for the people. The voters in Pinellas County overwhelmingly passed term limits in 1996, yet the commission never adopted these term limits. My opponent had the chance to right that wrong while serving with me on the Charter Review Commission, but instead did the opposite and spoke against term limits. I will respect the people's voice and vote for term limits. I will protect green space in your neighborhoods and support sound environmental policies that allow people to enjoy their beaches and boating. I will protect the vulnerable and assist those less fortunate with programs that instill self-sufficiency. 
I will vote for common sense and fiscally responsible transportation plans that don't remove car lanes and don't add more congestion to our roads. As a business owner myself, I know firsthand what business owners and their employees need. They need to work. What they don't need is a county commission that overreaches and overregulates and puts them out of business. I will listen to business owners so they can continue to be the lifeline of our economy and to provide jobs in our community. With my business background, I have the experience and commitment to be accountable for every tax dollar spent. As a veteran, I have deep, deep respect for the rule of law. As your commissioner, I will support our sheriff and police and their ability to preserve your freedoms, protect your rights, and keep you safe. Public safety is government's highest priority, and while lawlessness runs rampant in cities across America, I will make it my duty to keep the people and businesses in Pinellas County safe. This position on the County Commission is an at-large seat, which means all registered voters in Pinellas can vote for this seat. I am humbly asking for your vote to be your voice on the Pinellas County Commission. For more information about me and my campaign, visit LarryAhern.com. I want to thank the Suncoast Tiger Bay for the opportunity to hear my statement. Thank you and God bless you, Larry Ahern. Candidate Long, you may now make your introductory remarks. Thank you so much for having me here today. I couldn't be more proud and more anxious to share with you and and your audience at Tiger Bay, why I am seeking re-election to the County Commission, share with you a little bit about some of the things that we have actually accomplished on the County Commission, and also uh, tell you a little bit about myself and why I think I am the best candidate to continue serving on the County Commission. Number one, we do have term limits in Pinellas County. Since Commissioner Justice and I have been elected, there have been five out of the seven of us commissioners that are different from the way the commission looked before we got there. It's called elections, everyone. Elections matter. And so with that said, you know, when I applied for my very first job when I was in high school, my mother said to me, now, Janet, when you apply for a job, It's really important that you show up for the interview, that you answer the questions to the very best of your ability, and you let people hold you accountable for the work that you want and are able to do. And that's why I'm here today, and that's why I've answered every questionnaire. I've appeared at every candidate forum. They've all been on Zoom, and I've answered the tough questions. Am I perfect? Of course, I'm not perfect. I'm human. We all make mistakes. But I am willing to be here today to answer your questions and be held accountable for my actions on the county commission. I hope you all know that I have been a leader. I haven't been sitting in the shadows writing out statements for other people to read. I've led this county and the region on issues like transportation and public transportation options. I've held summits, two-day summits on the issue of climate change and sea level rise, which in my opinion is the existential greatest threat that our county, our state, and our country face right now for the very existence of our planet as we know it. I am prepared to continue leading on this issue I have gotten my um, memorandum of understanding that, oh, by the way, was signed off on by 30 regional governments. As of two sad Fridays ago, the 30th government, Sarasota County, signed on to that memorandum of understanding, which is a collaborative effort regionally to bring our region together to work on this very vulnerable issue for the state of Florida. That uh, that coalition and collaboration have been passed at the Florida Association of Counties by all 67 counties in this state. That should tell you that I am not a lazy individual. I work really, really hard 
to represent our citizens here. And lastly, I want to talk a little bit about affordable housing and the great work that this county has been doing on providing affordable housing for our young people, for those people coming back from college that want to be police officers or firefighters or law enforcement folks or our teachers. We want them to be able to afford to live in Pinellas County and not have to go to Pasco or Manatee in order to have a job here. So I hope I'll be able to answer your questions to your satisfaction and that you will vote for Janet Long on November 3rd or before when you fill out your mail ballot because you can't go wrong with Janet Long. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Long. There are also two candidates in the District 3 race, incumbent Charlie Justice and challenger Tammy Vasquez. Candidate Tammy Vasquez was given the opportunity to submit a statement, but did not do so. Candidate Justice will now make his introductory remarks. Thank you very much for being with us today. I appreciate the opportunity to share our thoughts and have this discussion today. I am Charlie Justice. I'm a Pinellas native. I grew up in West St. Pete, all local schools, worked my way through USF, met my wife, Kathleen, and now we have two wonderful daughters. I heard the call to public service and I served 10 years in the Florida legislature from 2000 to 2010. As I was ending my time in Tallahassee, the Pinellas County Commission had kind of gotten out of, off of tracks and got out of the way. In fact, the local newspaper said it was an ideological swamp. I ran for commission to end the dysfunction and the voters agreed. My approach brought a new era of consensus building and we got to work. We repaired relationships with our 24 cities and while we partnered with our cities, we also invested in our needed unincorporated areas. We tackled areas of poverty and invested in infrastructure like never before. We cultivated our local businesses and aided them in getting their products to a global market. We created the Small Business Enterprise Program, keeping more of your government's purchasing power here with our local businesses. When we initiated this program, only $250,000 were going to participating businesses. Now that's over $7 million. That's a huge win for our local businesses. We passed local ordinances that protected employees' wages, reduced the number of drunk drivers on our road, and aided the victims of human trafficking in getting out of those dangerous situations. My work as chair of the Tampa Bay Estuary Program has led to the best water quality of Tampa Bay in over 50 years. And my service on the multi-county Gulf Consortium has led to millions for cleaning up Lake Seminole. A clean estuary and clean bays mean billions to our local economy. We've invested in infrastructure, parks, adding green space, we funded our first responders like never before, adding better protective gear, an updated fleet, new rescue units in Eastlake, the beaches, and Fort DeSoto, and we provided millions for salary improvements. We built a hurricane resistant emergency operations center and partnered with the city of St. Pete to build their new police headquarters and a backup 911 center. We've done all of this while not raising millage rates and keeping the lowest debt ratio of any urban county in Florida. When I was chairman, I put an end to the corruption you read about in the paper at the Construction and Licensing Board. We've streamlined county operations. We've improved our partnerships with our cities and our regional neighbors. Our efforts have met millions in state and federal funding for your priorities. We know that we need to do this work to provide the traditional local government services that you count on, but we also need to do it in times of emergency, whether it's that September, October hurricane that we brace for or a once in a lifetime global pandemic. Our prioritized budget is based on doing the right thing for Pinellas. And that also means listening to our scientists and experts, not the loudest voices in a room or even the loudest voices on a Zoom. That's a lot of important work and we're not done. We wanna continue our good work in the Lelman community, increase access to affordable housing for every income level, cultivate and support our local businesses and improve transportation so we can all get where we're going just a little bit faster. There's still important work to do. I hope you'll join me. Well, thank you both very much. I now have some questions for you. Please um, remember that we're asking you to limit your answers to about three minutes or a little bit less. At recent county commission meetings, a lot of residents have called in, many of them saying their commissioners should do exactly what the con constituents demand. To me, that raises a question about leadership. So how do each of you define your role as a leader? What does that entail? And I'll start with you, Commissioner Justice. Thank you very much. It's, it's actually, as I just said at the end of my uh, opening remarks, 
you have to take the best data that you get. And we've got a lot of good scientists, doctors, experts, emergency operations, uh, county staff, sheriff. We take all of that data, all the information, all the briefings, all the advice that we get. And then you have to make the best decision possible. You can't just listen to 12 people, 15 people, 20 people that sign a survey. There's nearly a million people in Pinellas County. And we can get you a survey on anything. But at the end of the day, you take all the information in, you make the best decision possible for the most people in Pinellas that you can do. And if people want to vote differently, that's their choice. But you have to do the right thing. Time after time, whether it's my time on the Pinellas County Commission or in the Florida legislature uh, on tough issues like phone rates or Terry Shive or other issues like that, I've always made the decision that I thought was right for the people that I represent. Thank you. Commissioner Long? You know, that's a really great question, Margie, especially in the world we live in today. I don't want to repeat everything that Commissioner Justice just said. I would like to agree with everything he said, though. A leader, you know, making decisions is not about listening to the loudest voices in the room or people who are screaming or yelling at you or talking with no regard and no respect. It's about taking into consideration what is the right thing to do for the most amount of people. And what I think some of these folks forget is that we're all human too. I have a large family, three children and five grandchildren. The decisions that I make on the county commission are really being made with the future of those grandchildren in mind. It's not about me. It isn't about my immediate family. We've already had an opportunity to live in paradise. I want to be able to set the stage for my grandchildren, their grandchildren, and generations after them to be able to live in the same paradise that we live in today. It isn't about me, 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 and my, my, my or people who don't know the meaning of the word sacrifice anymore. You know, um, it's really hard to to talk to folks who just are ideologically opposed to everything you say and everything that you do. It's um, the rhetoric and the vitriol and the anger and the, righteousness that some people feel about their own opinion, it's um, not a good way to conduct public policy. And I think that the actions that we've taken on the county commission indicate or hopefully will indicate to you that you've got a very solid, strong group of mature adults at the wheel. And we're not going to be pushed around and bullied into doing things that we know are not the right thing to do. When you have board certified and fellowship trained physicians, scientists, and the medical community at large, you know, a lot of these folks think that we are only listening to our own staff, which could not be further from the truth. We've had information from a variety of sources. I believe in science. I believe in medicine. That's why we have fluoride back in our public drinking water to protect our little ones and our kids and their teeth so they can have a healthy body. Um, I, I could go on and on and on, but those are that's what leadership looks like to me. The decisions that have been made by this county commission. Are we perfect? No, we're not perfect but we're not going to be bullied and we are going to listen to the experts because we know we may not be the smartest person in the room, but we know a lot of really good people and we have incredible staff that are working day and night. When you go to bed at night and you stay awake looking at the ceiling all night long, really thinking and reflecting on the day and the things you've heard and the way people have talked to you, you know, you really begin to, to question your internal moral compass. And if there's one thing I know when I do finally drift off to sleep at night, I can rest easy knowing that in my heart, in my gut, and in my, in my moral compass, I have 
done and made the decisions that I think are the right decisions for my grandchildren, your grandchildren, and their kids and their grandchildren so that our county will continue to exist and be here and have the same quality of life that we have enjoyed, all of us who are taking advantage of it today. I know I sound a little passionate and uh, I get myself all revved up on these issues because I care. I care so deeply about how we move forward and what kind of an example we leave for our kids. I want my grandkids to be thank proud you, of thank me. You. Thank you. I, thank you. I'm sorry. I think you get the message. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, our next question is about government budgets. Budgets are, of course, tight in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, the revenue coming into the county commission, or to, the, to Pinellas County, excuse me. How does that impact your ideas for the use of Penny for Pinellas funds going forward? This time I will start with you, Commissioner Long. Three minutes, Thank please. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to answer that question because I'm so proud of the wisdom and the foresight that I think we've used as a group. Every single year, we start our process on our budget right after the first of the year with a strategic planning meeting. All that to say, it is incredibly well thought through. And we consider every single penny and every single one of us have an opportunity to have our fingerprints on the individual items in that budget. Let me tell you something. It's not like being in the Florida legislature where four people at the top of the pile make the decisions on where the money's going. Every single one of us are, hel are held responsible for those dollars and how they're being spent. And when we came up with our priorities for the penny for Pinellas and worked very hard on an education campaign to share with our citizens how we were going to spend those dollars. We didn't do it frivolously, and we didn't wait for staff to tell us what to do. We offered our own vision. Every one of us did. So collectively, we've put together a budget knowing, knowing that it won't be until the end of next year when we really know the effects of the shutdown on our economy. We won't really know what it has done to our government resources. That said, we prepared for it. We put our budget together for 2021 with a very clear and fine eye on 2022 so that we have set aside the dollars to be able, out of our budget to be able to carry us through in 2022, as well as hopefully be able to provide the additional help for our small businesses and for our citizens who have had the unfortunate experience of having their businesses closed or losing their jobs and are fighting to put a roof over their head, food on their table and clothes on their back. So we are a compassionate, loving, caring group of people who care about our citizens, and we handle our money in exactly the same way. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Commissioner Justice, talk about your ideas for Penny for Pinellas funding. Thank you. And it's important to know um, that, uh, that we did. We did took a hit this year with um, the worst timing of, of COVID impact on travel, on business, on purchasing. We lost our two biggest month for our tourism industry. And that also is important because our tourists pay about a third annually of our penny for Pinellas, which pays for our infrastructure projects. So as, as we kind of uh, flesh this out over the decade, uh, there'll be projects that get moved around, maybe projects that de get delayed. We'll try and seek federal and state grants to help pay for some of those projects uh, so that we can keep them going. It's important to know that uh, the, the, the impacts will be on our sales tax, will be on our bed tax, and it'll be on our gas tax. As everyone stayed home a little bit more, uh, during the spring, uh, that impacts our road, our road budgets, uh, and our planning for construction uh, in that area. Um, as we do our budgets, it's important to know that since we've been on the commission, we have not had a general fund rate increase. We have not had a tax rate increase on property taxes at all. In fact, this last year, in a few of our EMS funds, we actually reduced the millage rates. Um, if you're not familiar, county government is not just one simple tax fund. 
It's multiple different tax uh, funds. And we actually reduced the rate on some of those. The penny for Pinellas is so important. And we're grateful for the 83% of voters that approved it. Uh, the penny for Pinellas allows us to pay for those capital projects, the Bayside Bridge, our courts and jail, our emergency operations center on Almerton Road, the 20 million that we contributed to the city of St. Pete Police Department. All of those things are from the Penny for Pinellas Fund. And because of the Penny for Pinellas, we don't bond like other governments do. And that's why we're incredibly proud that we have the lowest debt ratio of any urban county in Florida uh, because we pay as we go because of the penny. Uh, but we'll have to look at those year by year. Uh, it's, it's, we don't set those for 10 years. We set them for six years, but we adjust and, and adapt every year. And we'll continue to do that uh, with an eye on the long term. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we're approaching the bottom of the hour where we're going to go to uh, audience questions, participant questions, but I have a quick one for you. So we'll make this a lightning round before we go to uh, the audience questions. In 60 seconds, can you tell me about your vision for transportation in Pinellas? And Commissioner Justice, you want to go first, please? Sure. I think that we need to uh, build on the successes that we're having with the, the Sunrunner and other programs like that. But really, what we need to do is ensure that we are connecting people to where they want to go. Uh, too often, the transportation was just on the biggest roads that were out there. We need to make sure that the transportation is connecting people from where they live to where they work or where they want to recreate. And that's really what we've been trying to do with our vision. Uh, we've been working with Ford Pinellas, the PSDA, and the county commission staff to kind of set that vision for the next uh, decade. And that's that's really kind of the strategy that we want to implement from now on. Thank you. Commissioner Long. Thank you for that great question, which leads me to say, hopefully I'll be successful on November 3rd and you can plan an entire meeting on public transportation visions for not only our county, but our region. I'm fortunate enough to sit on a PSTA, Forward Pinellas, and T. Barta. And we have developed a plan called Envision 2030, which I am so excited to share with you. It tells me and it gives me great hope that in spite of this pandemic, the future is incredibly bright. We have the most amazing new technologies coming right down the pike that will very soon, within the next five years, be able to take our citizens throughout the region uh, um, with the new technologies that have been developed and their air taxis. And there are things like the cable propelled transit that we're working on and studying and have a project lined up and ready to go. We have an autonomous pilot project going on. You may, ne- you may not know, but I'm going to share with you today in downtown St. Petersburg that is supposed to begin and at the end of this month or in November to go from a down at the end by, by um, where 400 beaches all the way up to um, the Dali Museum. And then we, as soon as that gets launched, we want to put it in North County in, in Dunedin. So those, those are some of the things that are going on. And we have electric buses at PSTA and quite a fleet now. We have 16 of them with another five that we're getting ready to order. And we're doing a lot of it with federal and state grants that we've received from a variety of sources. So I look forward very much to having a more in-depth conversation on this issue. Thank you both very much. Amy, I think we're ready for some questions from our audience. Do you have some? Yes, um, I have a couple of great questions. And please continue to submit your questions via that Q&A box. Um, This question comes from Rebecca Falkenberry. What is your position on protecting the beautiful Douglas property, a fabulous opportunity to have green open space in Mid-County? Decision dates are coming up soon. Uh, Commissioner Justice, you want to take that one first? Sure. Uh, Protecting green space is critically important for the most densely populated county in Florida. And that's why we're incredibly proud that we were able to buy the Bay Point Golf Course last year for green space and and water retention in Seminole. While we're incredibly proud to add 125 acres to an 86-acre park at Wall Springs in Palm Harbor. Uh, The property that uh, Rebecca mentions in Dunedin is an attractive property. And I think we all support, uh, if we can, Uh, If we are able to afford it, we definitely want to protect it. We definitely want to uh, do that. Our staff is currently working with the city of Dunedin 
uh, to see if we can't make some financing available to make that happen. Commissioner Long? Yeah, I cannot say more than uh, uh, Commissioner Justice has already said. I'm very supportive of this. While we together cannot speak for the rest of our colleagues, I understand that uh, the staff is now working on negotiations for and working to provide funding sources from a variety of sources to make it possible. So stay tuned. I hope to be able to make a great announcement very soon. Thank you both. Um, this question comes from James Gillespie. Do we know yet how damaging to county revenues ha the coronavirus has been and where will it be felt most seriously? Uh, Commissioner Long, let's start with you on that one. Well, we don't know exactly what the effects are, Jim. I, I, that's a big question that we all are anxious to find out. We did receive a report, though, in a presentation from our property appraiser, Mr. Twitty, that shared with us that we won't know until the end of 2021 for sure. But we do know, and it is expected that we'll have between a 4 and a 6% drop in revenue in our property taxes. And that's why we've been so cautious with how we put our budget together this year and how we've set aside funds to get us through in 2021. Because what we don't want to have to do is to have uh, more people be laid off from work and or lose their jobs. And we don't want to have to let our own employees go. 1,700 of them, by the way, is what happened in the last downturn in our economy. So we're trying the very best we know how to be prepared. And that's about all I can tell you right now, because unfortunately, I don't have a crystal ball. Thank you for the question. Commissioner Justice, would you like to weigh in on that one? Sure. Just as, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the areas where we're going to feel, we don't know about the property tax, especially on our commercial property yet. Um, but the areas that we're going to take the biggest hit are the penny for Pinellas, which are paid for by third by tourists, uh, our gas tax when everyone kind of was staying home this spring, and then the bed tax, which uh, we have used uh, for marketing our destination, as well as sand nourishment on our beaches, as well as participating with our partners um, for uh, cultural places like the Dolly Museum or Ruth Eckerd Hall or the Clearwater Aquarium. So those funds are, are the ones that are going to take the most uh, serious impact. Thank you both. Um, moving on to uh, Bob D asks, what has the commission done to support mental health services? And Commissioner Justice, I'll let you start with this one. Sure. That's an area that uh, we're all concerned about with uh, um, certainly during this time, especially, but uh, even prior to that, opioid abuse has gone up. Uh, we've seen uh, mental health issues throughout. Uh, this county commission a couple years ago identified uh, with our great staff, identified basically about 30, 35 folks that uh, were the most high um, users of government services. And they were in and out of different facilities. And so we in uh, initiated a pilot program and we basically said, all right, these 35 folks, we need to really target them and provide them with true wraparound services. And by doing that, we immediately were saving hundreds of thousands of dollars of going one facility to another facility, jail, in and out of jail, uh, in and out of hospitals, things like that. So that's just an example of the emphasis that we've put on it. Uh, but we're funding, I believe, uh, about $11 million for direct mental services that we match with $35 million from state funds uh, for direct services for our folks in Pinellas County. Thank you. Commissioner Long, would you like to answer that question? Uh, uh, what has the commission done to support mental health services? Well, be, besides the things that Commissioner Justice has already spoken about, uh, we did hire a major, a very well-known firm who deals in this subject matter to assess the work that we've already been doing for the last 15 years uh, on the county commission to address mental health. And they have provided us with their final product and they have made recommendations for how we move forward and how we really get a handle on corralling all of the millions and millions of dollars that come into our county on the issue of mental health and drug addiction and um, 
you know, I think that the sheriff has done an incredible job of finding dollars in his budget to support safe harbor. So we no longer are just uh, taking folks off the street and put them in, putting them in jail. If, for instance, they're either homeless or they're intoxicated, they're being taken up care of at Safe Harbor, and that's been a great help. Uh, you may know that I started a foundation um, on behalf of former Commissioner John Maroney, who has been for years putting on the law enforcement and first responder events. And we developed a pilot project for mental health programs for our first responders and law enforcement personnel, which has been an extraordinary, an extraordinary, overwhelming success. Because obviously, if there's ever been a time when they need some support, it's now. So again, these issues are critical. We are not blind to them and have been doing our best to provide services by everyone, actually. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Long. Uh, this question comes from Karen Mullins. Where do you see Pinellas in five years? Commissioner Long, we'll start with you on that one. Well, I can tell you in five years, I hope that our county has greatly moved forward, forward on affordable housing, that we have a real public transportation system that will help us get a lot of our cars off of the road and help to reduce the carbon footprint. I think that we'll be in a much finer place than we are today on the issues of, um, oh my gosh, there's so many, climate change, sea level rise, resiliency, and sustainability. Through the work that I've done on those issues, we now have our own sustainability officer. And every piece of our strategic plan has a sustainable and resiliency piece attached to it. And I look forward to the future. I think it's really, really bright that there are many areas that we can make improvements on. And we're not hard to find. So you can, if you have great ideas, we'd love to hear from them. Um, thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Justice, you want to uh, say, say where do you see Pinellas in five years? Well, yes, thank you. Initially, I, I hope that we're thriving in a post-COVID era uh, five years from now in Pinellas County. And and across our country. Uh, I also hope that we're celebrating a, another Super Bowl for the Bucks and another uh, World Series for the Rays. Uh, that would be nice. But really, um, in five years, I hope that uh, our industries are thriving. I hope that we've got more clean manufacturers here. I hope our financial services is thriving. I hope our arts scene uh, throughout our county is thriving. But really, in five years, uh, as I do today, I want you to, if you graduate from USF, and you're here locally, or you graduate from Florida, Florida State, Miami, and you come home, I want you to have a job. I want you to think this is a great place to grow up. It's a great place I can get a job. I can afford to get a home. I want to raise my family here. I want to retire here. Uh, that should be the goal for all of us, that we can have that same thing uh, Commissioner Long talked about. I mean, I grew up in St. Pete. I've never wanted to leave. Uh, I want my daughters to have that same kind of feeling about Pinellas County that I did. And that's where I hope we are in five years. Great. Thank you. Our next question comes from Gregory Wilson. Your opponents obviously think they're better suited for the job of Pinellas County Commissioner. What are examples of initiatives and programs you feel are most in jeopardy should they be successful in their respective campaigns? In other words, what's at stake in this election that voters should know about? Commissioner Long, we'll let you start with that one. That's a really loaded question. Thank you, Gregory. <laughs> you know, the very fact that I'm here today and my opponent is not should speak volumes to all of you because nobody knows where he stands on these issues. That said, uh, I'd like to know one, just one issue that he championed when he was in the legislature. I remember in uh, years past, you know, I've heard him say, we don't need government. We don't need taxes. What we need is more accountability. Okay, well, I don't see him here today standing up to all of these questions, number one. And number two, I think transportation will take a back seat. And I'd hate to see us back in the horse and buggy days. I think 
That horse has left the barn, don't you? Secondly, I don't believe that he will uh, ever be a participant in moving our county forward if there's one dime that is required coming into our coffers from taxes. Taxes have a, are a dirty word to my opponent, and he voted no on every single, think about this for those of you that are listening, on every single issue that had to do with local government, my opponent voted no in the legislature. Why on earth do you think that he will ever take a yes vote if he's on the county commission? Well, and I, I can't speak a lot about my opponent. I've never actually met my opponent. I uh, never uh, uh, had the opportunity. Um, when I came on the commission, the reason that the voters elected myself, elected Commissioner Long, is that the commission was getting bogged down in partisan bickering, and it slowed everything down. It created turmoil and arguments between the county and the cities and our nonprofit community leaders. And so I don't know that a specific issue, but I think that uh, you're seeing it this year. Would we have seen masks? Would we have seen a response to COVID at all? This commission bases its decisions on science, on facts, on hearing expert testimony. We don't make our decisions based on some Facebook post or some crazy meme that came from the extremes. And I'm not talking about in, in uh, generics about Republican, Democrat. I'm talking about the extremes of the parties. That is where I'm worried about the commission going if, it, uh, if we take a different turn. But listen, I will tell you four years ago uh, in my campaign for re-election, I never mentioned my opponent's name. In this campaign, we haven't mentioned my opponent's name. The important work that we've gotten done on your county commission, the level-headed, calm, sensible leadership I provided is exactly what I'll continue to do. And that's why you should re-elect me. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Justice, I'm gonna give you the next one here. This one comes from Renee Flowers. There's been a lot of talk about term limits for the commission. Please clarify what and why the commission does not have term limits. Okay, um, probably best to get an attorney on here because it's, it came from uh, uh, years of getting clarity from the courts from how the original ballot language was written over 25 years ago, 24 years ago. And so it came to the determination that the way the ballot was uh, that it did not apply to the county commission when voters put that in for uh, other offices. And that's my best uh, non-attorney explanation of, of what happened. But certainly uh, there's always the opportunity that if citizens wanted that, uh, it could be put on the ballot again. But I will tell you in the eight years I've been on the county commission, uh, I've heard it from one constituent. And then of course we're hearing it this year during a campaign when there's nothing else to talk about. So uh, I don't support term limits. I saw the impact that it had in Tallahassee uh, and I don't want that uh, for our local government. Thank you. Commissioner Long, would you like to weigh in on that one? Well, I do, and I don't want to be redundant because I think I already alluded to it, and Commissioner Justice just talked about the legal piece. Thank you, Commissioner. But, you know, as I said uh, in my early uh, introductory remarks, since I have been on the county commission, we have had several commissioners that have turned over, either because they retired or because they've been voted out. And by the time this election is finished, there will be five new commissioners that have been there less than eight years. So to me, that's what elections are for. If the, if the voters are not happy with whoever is there, then we won't be there. And that, But I can tell you that um, I, for one, and if you're people that are listening today, if you care about competence, if you care about experience, if you, if you care about institutional history and knowledge about how the budget works or how you get things done really effectively in a government, then you'll elect people who actually care enough to share with you the information that Commissioner of Justice and I shared with you today. If you think that you can uh, come into county government as a, a small business person or an ordinary citizen, and you know the ins and outs of putting together a $2.6 billion budget, I'm so sorry. I think, and as I 
This isn't like the legislature where four people get to tell you what to do and then you just vote yes. You've got to be responsible for this budget that we put together. It isn't all done by staff and you've got to ask a lot of questions and you've got to do your homework. Volumes and volumes and volumes of homework. And let me tell you one more thing that hasn't been brought up. Thank you, Renee, for that question. Uh, Listen, this is not a part-time job, okay? I bet you between Commissioner Justice, well, I know myself, I work at least 60 to 70 hours a week. That is not a joke. If you think I'm kidding, ask my husband. Thank you very much. Margie, I think we have a couple more questions on your side. And so I think we'll finish up with a, with a couple from your list over there. Fantastic. Thank you, Amy. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about regionalism. In what areas, when is it appropriate for Pinellas County to work with our neighboring counties, especially Hillsborough and Pasco counties? Commissioner Justice, do you want to begin, please? Sure. And, and uh, I won't talk about transportation because I think there's another commission that wants to talk about that. So I'll talk about a program that's probably one of the most successful regional partnerships that we have that very few folks know about. And that's the Tampa Bay Estuary Program. And it's an intergovernmental uh, group of uh, Manatee, Hillsborough, Pinellas, uh, Tampa, Clearwater, St. Pete representatives, as well as uh, representatives from DEP and Swift Mud and the EPA. And it sets forth uh, ideas for policy and initiatives uh, to guide all of our local governments on environmental programs. It's what's led to the fertilizer ban during the rainy season uh, in Pinellas County. It's what's led to the cleanest Tampa Bay, the cleanest water in over 50 years. Uh, in the 90s, they set a goal of uh, uh, 20,000, I think 20 some odd acres of uh, seagrass. Why that's important in seagrass is an indicator is that if seagrass is growing, that means the bay is clearer. Uh, that's better for the seagrass. It's better for the water quality. Obviously, if you fish or you're boating, it's better for that as well. Uh, but it's this, this working together uh, as a region uh, that we've made those decisions and those um, initiatives that our local governments have partnered with. It's really, really critical. And it's not just uh, an environmental thing. A clean bay, not just a bay, but a clean bay, a healthy estuary means billions of dollars for our economy. And that's just one example of where uh, so a regional approach can be very effective and can be very successful. It's not for every issue and every day, but there's places and times where we should come together and we should represent the entire Bay Area. Thank you. Commissioner Long. So I want to answer this question with a question for all of you. If you leave your house in the morning and your job is in Hillsborough County or Pasco, so you have to drive across the bridge and you have to cross the Pinellas County line. As you do so every day, are you thinking about that big black line that you see on a map where the boundary is? No, of course you're not. You're not thinking when you go across the Howard Franklin Bridge, whether or not you're in Pinellas County or in Hillsborough, you've got your eye on your goal, which is your destination from one county to another. That's a good example of why regionalism is so critical when you talk about public transportation. And on top of that, it is not lost, I hope, on any of you that we have one of the most fantastic international airports in the world, in the entire world, in Hillsborough County. Don't we, would we all like to have to start today in today's political environment, having to build a Tampa International Airport? Oh my Lord, we would never get that done. So I say those things to you to say on the issues of transportation, on the issues of climate change and sea level rise, we are a county surrounded on three sides by water. It's so beautiful on a bright sunny day, but it doesn't take much of a storm to stir up all that water. And guess what? In the event of a major storm, our county gets totally cut off from Hillsborough and Pasco, it becomes an island. These are issues that we have got to work on together. If we have to evacuate our county, holy smokes, you think we don't need regional cooperation to get that done? There's a lot of big pressing issues that we have got to resolve. Guess what, folks? It isn't free. 
we, at the same time we're working on the solutions, we also have to think about the funding to take care of it. And how are we going to take care of it? And to me, some of these issues that I'm talking about right now, as well as the one Commissioner Justice just spoke about, when you get right down and peel the onion all the way, it's about public health and safety. Thank you. Thanks. And you both have alluded a little bit to politics being polarized and divisive. And I wanted to ask you both on a, a personal level, how do you reach out to people who have completely different viewpoints than you? How do you do that kind of communication? Commissioner Long? Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> it is really, really difficult. And believe you me, I spend an awful lot of time thinking, meditating, reflecting, and searching for the right words to try to find a way on something that we can agree on. Because I've learned that if you can sit down and have an eyeball to eyeball conversation with somebody, or you can have a one on one with them, you can focus on something that the two of you can come to agreement on. It helps to set a foundation to build a path for you to begin to understand each other and why you feel the way that you do. And is there a possibility that you can find yourself moving from a little bit from point A? Maybe you'll just get to B or C, but gradually, maybe you'll just come to realize that maybe you shouldn't be quite so rigid in your thought process. And though I think you can tell I'm very passionate about uh, how much I care about our county and about our quality of life here and about my family and all these issues we've talked today, I, I, I really work hard to try to find ways to build a common consensus. And evidence of that is how we put a collaborative effort together with 30 regional governments. I think it should tell you that I don't just take no for an answer, but I keep on working on it and talking about it and trying to find a way to collaborate. And so I'm not rigid, but bringing 30 regional governments together in this area, when you think about the political and the politics of the folks that are elected, I think that's a pretty damn big accomplishment, don't you? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Here's your justice. How do you reach out to people with different viewpoints? Yeah, it, it, it can be a challenge, but I, it, there's two parts of it. Uh, in, on, a, on a professional way, we serve, uh, when you get elected to the county commission, uh, you get appointed to multiple boards and committees. And I can tell you on these some of these boards that are regional, I've served uh, on the board of an area agency on aging. I serve as chair of the Tampa Bay Estuary Program. I was on the 23 county Gulf Consortium. And I can tell you that uh, when I met commissioners or city uh, council members from other areas, I, I didn't ask what party representation they were. Uh, they were part of this board. We had a mission. Uh, I can tell you that uh, uh, I have Republican members on our estuary board uh, that are great members of that estuary board, and we do work. So you, it is, as Commissioner Long said, you find areas of consensus uh, that you work on and have successes there. Um, there's some issues that you're never going to change people's mind on, and you have to decide how much you want to deal with that. On a, um, on a personal nature, I can tell you that uh, uh, I've lived here my whole life. I grew up here. I still have a lot of friends uh, that I went to high school with uh, on my social media feed, and a lot of them uh, have a little bit different political views than I do, uh, but we maintain some of those personal relationships and we talk about family and we talk about uh, our dogs and we talk about uh, where the cool place to go and this weekend, uh, we stay away from some of those topics, but you build those relationships so that when there are opportunities uh, to work together, you can have success there. Well, thank you both very much. Amy, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Thank you. Uh, my sincerest thanks to both candidates uh, and to everybody in our audience who submitted those thoughtful, insightful questions um, and, you know, to the candidates for the very informative answers. A special thank you to you, Margie, for being a terrific uh, moderator and uh, the thoughtful questions that came from you as well. Um, 
For everybody who participated in the Suncoast Tiger Bay virtual event, we thank you for joining us on behalf of the Suncoast Tiger Bay board. Uh, we appreciate your continued support of Suncoast Tiger Bay. We've got lots of great programming coming up that we uh, that you'll get in your inboxes and updates. Um, we also have um, combined efforts with other Tiger Bays throughout the state, and there are state um, state programming series that is coming up as well. So you'll get more information on our website and in your uh, email inboxes. And we hope that you will join us next week at noon. Our next virtual uh, candidate event is for Pinellas County Sheriff. Have a wonderful day, everybody. And thank you so much for joining us today.